Hello and welcome to episode three of the Don't Keep Mum podcast. And somehow, even mid-lockdown limbo, my parenting panel are still turning up and chipping in. Today, we discuss all the parental C words. Let's go. Okay, hello guys. Hi. Welcome to episode three. We made it. (laughs) Okay, today's episode is everything beginning with the letter C. So I've got some words that were sent in by our followers. Um, We put a shout out on Instagram. uh, And on the top of that list uh, is coaching. So what I'll do is if we go round and just get everyone's opinions on coaching, what a lot of people said um, there was kind of like two sides to, to the whole idea of coaching. There was one one group of people that said that they felt that you got overcoached, especially if you were a new mum. You know, like people had so many opinions to to kind of put on you and, and give to you. And then the other school of thought was that there wasn't really the coaching that people needed around the stuff that they just you know, were mind blown by. Let's go. Um, yeah. So I suppose I'm a new mum and an old mum. So I'm a new mum to twins. And um I suppose in terms of coaching with these, not a lot of you have had twins. So <laughs> <laughs> everything's a bit of a, you didn't tell me that one. Um, I think I fell at a good point with Phoenix, my oldest, um, in terms of coaching, because I think it does depend when you have children. If you're the first person amongst all your friends and family, or if yeah. you're the last, so the last, you're going to have a lot of people with advice and you might feel a little bit irritated. But also there's our gems there. Um, I think I felt quite like in the middle. And um, yeah, kind of from watching as well, you kind of just think, oh, well, I'll do that next time because that worked for them. And or I won't do I won't do that, but I won't tell them that they did that wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, do you feel a difference between when you became a first time mum and and now? Like, do you do you feel more more in control of what's going on? Do you feel you need more coaches or less coaching on on certain? I, certain feel, I feel people are less inclined to want to tell you. I think the first time people do want to tell you. I think. Um, there is like initiation as well some stuff people would tell you over tell you um maybe even try to scare you and other things um yeah and like just but this time around I think um I think people are less inclined to try and yeah. coach me and they have just more and want to say oh you're doing really well <laughs> like <laughs> like that um what's what's it called on in america in the colleges when they is it is it hazing when they haze people in yeah do do you do you you feel like when you became like a first time mum when you were first pregnant do do you did you ever get that sense that some people were kind of like hazing you in and making you kind of go through yeah trying to try to blow blow your mind to see your reaction if if not that it was definitely like you know stories at a campfire scary stories at the campfire or something yeah. like um everything was definitely the worst outcome you think um, you know possible. you don't and if it didn't know. happen to them they knew someone you know yeah. oh, i know someone that yeah. like oh how can this babe come out for me any other way that's not how you just said <laughs> <laughs> those are the worst ones the ones about someone else someone that someone knows <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I suppose they're the things that you get taught that you do get coached in, aren't they? And then the things that you don't get coached, like, so people will tell you about meconium and they'll tell you about, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, I suppose it's more day-to-day things that you don't expect. I don't know if everyone else wants to chirp in. <laughs> mm-hmm. did, um, did everyone feel coached enough on things like uh, drugs and medication for, for like when you were going into labour? No, not at all. Sorry for like bursting. No, I think there, actually, Lydia, no. this this is where we had a conversation, didn't we? Mm-hmm. It depends. Like, if you do do antenatal classes, it can depend on who you had for your antenatal classes yeah. as to what they want to tell you in relation to pain relief. So if you've got yeah. someone who's quite who yeah. doesn't need pain relief, then they might be inclined to tell you, well, this one will make the baby sleepy, and this one will, you know, might make the baby come out um and all floppy or so yeah. you know, negatives rather than you know 
but also it could help you feel this way about yeah. like each other. Did you, yeah. Olivia, did you do the, um, I know you did the NCT ones, but did you do the um, NHS ones as well? No, just the NCT ones, but they did That's, tell you about them. But yeah, they, so I found with NCT, they told you a lot about them, but like Connie said, kind of like the side effects of them, so it made you feel kind of guilty about them, whereas the NHS ones I found just told you kind of the facts. This is how it can help you. This is what it does. This is how it affects the hormones, and like this is why it helps you. And so I think the fact, because I went to both, and what you could have, of it. Or, or what you could yeah. have, yeah, uh-huh. I, I kind of felt that the, during the NHS, I only went to the NHS ones and it was almost like a carte, carte blanche of, uh, of drugs. It was like a bit of an overload for, yeah. for me. Joe it was just like this big, long list of drugs with like a factual blurb for each each one. Yeah, that was exactly that was exactly what I wanted, though. But the floor getting... the floor is that you're not necessarily always the one in control of like adhering to that list. So I I, I realized, like, especially with um with by the time we had P, was that actually Yanni needed to be like aware of the list and what we what mm. we should do or what what worked well like the first the first time. Because with Theon, when I kind of like was like zoning out and trying to like censor my myself and they were asking him questions. We were lucky that we had mum there because he was like, like looking at mum. Yeah, like, I agree. I think that's that's a big thing. I think the your birthing partner needs to be in the know. Yeah. Scott was <laughs> Scott was definitely there with Ted. Scott was just there, not having a clue what to yeah. do. He went to all the less at the NCT sessions with me, mm-hmm. but in the situation, I think that to be fair, I don't know if he had had more information given to him. I don't know if he would have retained it because I think he was just so shocked in, in the situation <laughs> that maybe it's just by the time the second one comes around maybe it'll be better but for the first one he was just so dazed that he probably couldn't even get his words out yeah, that was a lot though that was an early baby so that yeah. would I mean you can't blame him too much can you <laughs> no and I was just awful I was just screaming so he's probably just like what and is going on here you've learned a lot just from your own experience like people so many people can tell you so many things mm. and you only absorb so much of it until you've experienced it for yourself. And like I just knew when I had Phoenix, I didn't want pethidin, but that's because I had pethidin when I had a miscarriage and I already knew yeah, how it yeah. felt, all that sort of stuff. And so that was my experience. And so really the only thing I knew I didn't want was pethidin. And one thing that I thought I might want is gas and air. But I think that's just TV lad because everyone has gas and air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i think especially because i was giving birth in a foreign country i knew that there could be cultural differences related to like anesthesia Mm -hmm. and also i mean there's nothing to fully prepare you but plenty of people are like you know they're like it's the real you know prepare for (laughs) the most pain you've ever had and so i just like not only in the public health classes did i want to know everything but i also like did tons of my own research because i was like we are not going to be in a situation where I can't access what I what I need or whatever like that was very very important to me and I don't it didn't necessarily help knowing all that but I'm glad I did I I I totally get that that we had the option to um go and give birth in in Greece and actually the the setup there because because when you give birth you give birth in a private setup is much better but for me like the the big fear for me was like the the cultural differences yeah you know, and, the, and that, that kind of like m- lost in translation of like I- ideals and what what you consider to be the norm and what's the norm for for them like on mm-hmm. honestly aren't <laughs> you giving you giving birth in China like I was completely in awe like the just the the yeah. whole the whole thing because yeah. I don't I don't think I would have been uh, brave enough or strong enough to be able to do it. Yeah, I think the the biggest difference would is was the bedside manner. Um, yeah, which when you're in a sensitive place like giving birth can make a huge difference. And so it wasn't rude culturally. Like if I had been if I was a woman from Hong Kong, it probably wouldn't have come off the way it came off but because yeah. I wasn't from that culture um it was quite severe <laughs> yeah. I, I also find that's another thing with um again you know first time second time as well in terms of uh coaching like the first time round, and I know you don't know anything because you've never done it before but you get properly treated like oh you're yeah. a first time mum you don't know your sure. body, anything 
And second time round, I had, um, oh, well, I've got a first time mum in the room next door, so you can just sort yourself out and just tell me when she- <laughs> Tell me when the head's coming. And that is literally what I get. Oh and my it was actually goodness. quite nice because I was in the pool and we were just, well, it meant Kieran got a lot of gas and air. But um, <laughs> we, more than me. But it was literally, I was left <laughs> until I was like, Kieran, the head's coming. And he went, I don't know how to stand up. I've had too much gas and air. And I was yeah. like, Kieran, the head's coming. And that's when they came back in. So like, well, you just knew, you knew the head was coming. Yeah. So that was it. And wow. then she came in. She's like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, it's coming. She's got a mirror and she's like, yeah, it's coming. But that was literally oh it. Oh my like goodness. It. But it's crazy, isn't it? What kind of time? Um... Was like, again, they were like, stop pushing. I was like, I'm not pushing. It's my body. And he was cut and he was coming. But they were talking to me like I was stupid and didn't have a clue. Yeah. The time around, because I've done it once, even though births are so different, every single birth <laughs> is different, they were just like, yeah, I'll leave to it yeah it's be- it's because they triage they don't they they triage so they they're looking at what like the priorities the priorities are so e- even if really like you're not feeling in any better position than you were the first time to them you still you've got one mark up on the other person that's a first yeah. time mum so they it just doesn't make sense though, does it no yeah well to the individual no but it's, it's the same, isn't it, with like, um, like Karna was saying, like giving giving birth abroad. It's all so it's so personal, isn't it? Mm. That whereas with other things like cultural differences might be fun and interesting and kind of like enjoyable in the moment. That is not where you want there to be. Like you you no. want you want to be personally understood for the whole entire experience. Otherwise, it. Doesn't. I have heard it's that echoed by so many people, though, Emily. That like the second time, it was yeah. they were just treated completely differently, and yet you can kind of understand it because it's like, oh, well, you've done this before, so you know. Whereas the first time, mom doesn't necessarily know. But mm. I've also heard, yeah, I've heard so many stories of people <laughs> first time where they're like, they didn't listen. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, they just they didn't. They yeah. really didn't. But then that the only thing that scared me second time was because I had pre eclampsia the first time. I was just like. Okay, you're leaving me to it, but what if there's something you don't know again? Yeah, yeah. and it was it, it was wasn't, undiagnosed it was, it was, as well, wasn't it? Put it. It was undiagnosed as well, like so. Yeah, until as you birth. know, like you could yeah. still be in the same kind of like territory, yeah. couldn't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like I'd only I'd been consultant led up until literally the week before. They're like, okay, you can be midwife led. I think you'll be all right. So mm-hmm. I was monitored really well through my pregnancy. Like I was getting scanned every two weeks, so it was, I was pretty confident that everything was fine, but. You still have that worry, don't you? Because it was un- undiagnosed. Yeah, consultant led is actually another good C word. Do you do you think that the way that it works in the UK with being consultant led on 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 certain pregnancies and, and certain areas in your pregnancy does does that satisfy the need for coaching, or do you think that's more kind of just a, a monitoring system? Just a monitoring system. Did you find it helpful at all? Obviously, <laughs> for um. Amelia with her all the scans and stuff it's really reassuring because they would have been able to pick everything up but when I when they found out I had preeclampsia of Emmett and they shoved me straight up onto consultant led on the ward yeah. that was just a horrendous experience that yeah. was just not nice experience whatsoever I was like I literally was 20 minutes before giving birth surrounded by six other women on this consultant led ward wow like, yeah it's horrible so it was just monitoring because <laughs> it just it becomes an emergency situation doesn't it yeah 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 I was consultant led with the twins and like I said it, it's it's reassuring um in terms of being able to you know they, they are keeping a good eye on you um but I didn't feel like they coached they were coaching in that sense yeah. because um quite often I wasn't sure you know why am I coming for this another scan or why am I coming in yeah. to be monitored or why you know, I was being monitored quite regularly and I knew like I knew generally why um you know I'm having you not find that with them um, with like taking bloods as well do you not feel like, yeah. like quite yeah. often when you're pregnant you're just kind of like put into a room they take your blood they don't really go through why they're taking your blood or what it's being yeah. taken for yeah exactly and I had that a lot with the consultant led stuff um yeah you, you, you do just feel a lot like um and you can tell why the NHS they are wonderful but they don't always have a lot of time and they mm-hmm. they have to meet certain you know um deadlines and you know they're you know six minute appointments and things like that don't they so yeah you know, they want to put the best in 
um but sometimes you can't always get the explanations you might want from, <laughs> from certain things um that's true and I, with having the twins with COVID, with the pandemic um i basically was pregnant through from how many months was i was like four four months when lockdown started and that's when all a lot of my scans and things started happening covid never see a word um <laughs> probably very different to maybe someone else's twin pregnancy because they didn't want you to stick around for long you know yeah. even if i was meant to be in for two hours on uh, monitoring um it was that's what you're there for and yeah. you know people wearing masks and um all sorts of other things you know going for a scan and they have to touch your belly but also they have to make sure they're not touching you you know it's <laughs> very strange and I can I, I get it the, the next c word um that came up was constipation mm. <laughs> how does, how does nice. anybody feel about that was 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 everybody constipated postpartum not postpartum yeah, but pre- yeah, pregnancy on. I always am but yeah. not postpartum I'm fine anyone so anyone I didn't really uh, know about it I didn't really know about it and then um they after Emma they were like oh have you had a poo and I was like <laughs> yeah like five minutes ago why and they're hmm. like you only gave birth a couple of hours ago that's, that's extraordinary I was like oh is it and they're like yeah <laughs> smiley face sticker shouldn't they yeah (laughs) like a big girl poo sticker like well done (laughs) to be fair i didn't actually know it was a thing until just now (laughs) (laughs) i didn't know it it does hurt hurt. you have have, like your pre-labor poops don't you so like most women they like suddenly like get the shits so yeah and then run up to labor and during labor because your body just wants to empty empty out to no way this, really? like labor yeah mm-hmm. so uh, that's why you hear lots of stories of people that poo mm-hmm. in labor it's like it's it's like really really normal that so many people have told me about the fact that they they poo say it feels well, that, like that, that makes sense that makes sense to me because you're pushing everything out yeah so yeah that you're doing, you're doing that i didn't know about the pre labor poops yeah, yeah. And then postpartum, I think what happens is that because you get that rush of hormones, but also you get um, you get those bad pushes, don't you? So because it's got the sensation is similar to when you're constipated and you're trying to push out a poo. Sometimes you push down wrong and you can you can flare up, um, flare up like hemorrhoids or even create hemorrhoids, which cause constipation. Yeah. So um, they normally give you a laxative afterwards. Do with- they? Uh, I was super lucky I didn't I mean everything I, yeah I know the con- like during pregnancy everything for me slows down which is a bit annoying but I've I've been super lucky after all the births that it's haven't had any hiccups I don't know how or why or <laughs> <laughs> sounds think, like I'm extremely lucky and it's <laughs> I think during pregnancy because everything does slow down um that's like the hormones isn't it and then yeah. also like everything's being pushed up so things are digesting slower um you can you can get onto constipation and then i think also when you're taking the supplements iron can yeah back you up. Uh, okay um but with a c-section um because they literally mess around with all your bowels like moving them out the way um yeah i didn't poo for days and then really? Like do they do they give you do they give you anything to empty you empty you out to make it easier? No, they even oh. give you iron because you've lost loads of blood, and so oh, then it feels even makes worse. Sense. Yeah, it's scary, and like um, it becomes me- like um, a fear, a yeah. fear to yeah. go. It's because... like been so long. You're like, this is going to be. Yeah, like, and yeah. it feel- and you're trying to like um, remember how to and like get the right motion going. Yeah. Um, Olivia's like, I'll come coach you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had, I had I've never had this problem, but it sounds awful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, after, the, after the episiotomy, I did not want to poo. Because I, I was like, it's all, it's already opened. Like, I don't want to push down there. And then the other thing was, I've got an open wound. I don't want poop near my open wound. Yeah. I was, yeah. like, I was like, nah, I'm, I'm just, I just won't eat. And then they're like, well, if you don't eat, then you won't produce milk. And then you're like, I was like, my brain was like so confused. And they gave me these, um, they gave me extra laxatives. And I was like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to do it. And I don't, I don't think I pooed for like, it was something ridiculous, like uh, seven or eight days. 
So it was on like the eighth day postpartum that I finally did like my first poo. Did it absolutely oh, kill? Oh, and it, it, it was everything though. Like the, the over anticipation of it and like the fear. And, like Yanni was outside, you know, just like waiting. And in my mind, I just had this idea that it, if I went to the toilet, everything was just going to rupture down there. My vagina was going to fall out. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> just yeah. leave it in the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, bye, bye, <laughs> C-sections, because I think um, is it is it just Connie that's had had a C-section? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So who, who, COVID C-section? Well, you've had you had a you've had a non-COVID C-section and a COVID C-section, and an yeah. emergency C-section and a planned C-section. Yeah. So and yeah, you also we'll had... just leave it to you. <laughs> See you later. Yeah, over to <laughs> well, and you also, Connie, you had you like lay with your first, you labored a ton yeah. and then had a C section. So like you have you've had the you've had like all the experience. <laughs> yeah, Connie can do it all. Bye. Bye. Yeah, no, you <laughs> haven't had it's the um, the good one. <laughs> yeah, the nice yeah, exactly. The nice. <laughs> yeah, another C word. Children, no more for me. <laughs> condom that's a c word <laughs> perception. Um, yeah so phoenix was an emergency c-section after um five days of contractions and laboring and all the rest of it whatever stage you call labor it felt like it was all labor um and uh I dilated sufficiently but um his heart rate dropped so he had to we had to go in and that was um that was like it's really horrendous but like it was kind of like you know when something just happens and you just have to go with it yeah, yeah. you go through mm-hmm. the motions like yeah and maybe because it was my first so that that was my body at, at its best um I felt like I recovered quite well from it quite quickly mm-hmm. I don't remember having much painkillers um I remember being in you know looking for maternity bra actually out in the shops looking for maternity bras on day three um and yeah like you have a scar you have you get your incision you have a scar and it has does take a long time to heal and I don't remember like feeling like I had the muscles back in my belly yeah um, for a very long time um were you, in your, just, were you in your 20s when you had phoenix 29 yeah yeah so, so, ba- so basically it's kind of like 20s versus 30s though as well isn't it yeah but i think yeah. it's also first versus second versus also having twins like your body was stretched so much more yeah like the muscles were different completely changed with twins and just even with like natural birth the contractions afterwards on your second are so much more painful than your first yeah. Yeah, so you must have been dealing with all that because your uterus is contracting but not only is that you having twins, so you, it's twice the size. Yeah. You've got that oh, so, as well as a massive incision through all of your muscle. Like, yeah. So your contraction well, second time are worse? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, but also yeah. what they talk about is like the contraction. It's, it's after- toes. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I uh, felt. It, so, wasn't, it wasn't the labouring necessarily that was... Oh, yeah, that's what I meant. I meant the contractions yeah. after you've given birth. Yeah, when, when it's you, like contracting, but it's... Yeah, uh, okay. going back into place. Yeah. So like, like when you breastfeed. Yeah, yeah. and the actual... Um, contractions in terms of giving birth with with Amelia compared to Emmett, Amelia was a million times easier. Oh, but afterwards, if, okay. If, if there's such thing as a magical birth, I'd say Amelia was one. Like I was saying about the woman leaving me, it was really easy with her. Like, it's expectations so, though, as well, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But, um, I was talking about the contractions afterwards. Because like if you're if you're already prepped for like worst case scenario, then anything is way better, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah and so like with Phoenix, with Phoenix being an emergency section the set this time around I was like so determined I didn't want an emergency section again I yeah. was like what's the point in going through both of them if you're just gonna have a c-section anyway yeah like, what's the point in trying to have a natural labor if I could just end up with a c-section anyway why don't I just go for an elected c-section um and then I kept like flipping between two like oh maybe I could try a natural and it turned out it wasn't my choice anyway because autumn's placenta was low-lying and in the way of the exit and so they had to come out um, for a C-section. And also Ezra decides to play up towards the end. And they thought that he um, 
had dropped in his like weight yeah. not actually dropped in weight what's it called like he's not gaining well, centile. Like, centile. yeah it's like a progressive his progr- uh, growth progression wasn't as much as they thought yeah because um, he'd always been bigger than her and he was measuring the same but it turns out it was just very curled up because he was actually 10 ounces heavier than her <laughs> But, but they had to get him out a bit earlier um but yeah I remember being like I don't want an emergency c-section um I'll go for an elected c-section and quite a few people I spoke to were saying yeah no elected is so much better because you know they can make sure they plan your weight correctly uh and, like they know you can your weight. some control as well don't you over yeah. the, the situation yeah so like the first time with day with Dane it was so scary for him because it was just left behind Mm. and he didn't know like if we were alive if you yeah yeah. we're rushed off and and I remember lying on the bed whilst they're like pumping me full of the like um anesthetic anesthesia what's it called yeah um and I just went oh could someone check on Dane and he said that's the best thing you could have done because I was just left there in my scrubs not knowing if you were okay yeah um so yeah the second time around I didn't want that I didn't want the baby to be in distress I didn't want us to be in distress I wanted to know what was happening and people said you know they'll give you because the first time around I remember being so itchy afterwards and I think it's because they didn't give me the right amount of stuff because Mm. they weren't sure what my original weight was and things like that they were asking me all these questions I didn't know answers to and so they just you know pumped me full (laughs) you know as much as they could to make sure I wouldn't feel this happening um so they said loads of people said the second one time around was easier um or better you know not second time but the elect the elected one would be but then I don't know if it's the twin factor but actually it was like so much harder recovery mm. um yeah but you've got I, you've got you've got double trauma haven't you you've got scar on scar so you've got scar tissue yeah. on scar tissue haven't you yeah 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 so that could be a factor too um I and you've got a toddler you're looking after yeah yeah exactly so I had a toddler. you can't just recover with a newborn baby you've got to recover while also still properly mumming yeah, yeah. You, and I think you're not you're, you're not Kardashian Kardashian it are you yeah, exactly um yeah I remember my back really really hurting and the doctor just said oh hello Ezra Ezra's piping mm. in he's like mum we're not that bad to you no <laughs> Um, my... he's, like, he's like move on already the doctor said well the babies were like scaffolding for your back so you know you've just removed it and I was like oh great mm, true, yeah. true but that is awful yeah. and, and uh, also not at all helpful yeah <laughs> and great news. I remember trying to leave the house like a week after and Dane went we're in the car and Dane went over one speed bump I went no nope, we're going back because I was in so much pain and yeah yeah like, but I was at the shops at day three with Phoenix you know like mm-hmm. this is outrageous why don't I feel the same yeah but I do also remember like you pushed yourself too much as well because yeah you have, you have like those crash days don't you yeah it is it is you know, cold yeah because they always say that is it day five is the worst yeah so like the u- euphoria like keeps you going till about day three then by day four you're normally too tired to really be able to do anything so you sleep but then by day five you have that kind of like it's almost like the post-traumatic stress like kicks in and like all the hormones kick in and like the reality kicks in and like do you know how we were talking about when you're going through the motions you kind of numb it out I think normally by day five people will suddenly come to terms with the reality of what they've been through and it's like big slap in your face but I do I, I do think that, again it's like a cultural thing because in Greece, most people have C-sections. So that's a C-section is the norm. So it's kind of standard that if you're, if you're going to give birth, you're going to have a C-section. You go private. And actually, you have to ask to have a, um, a, a natural uh, birth. And you have to find somebody that's willing to do it. But the, the set standard is that when you go to give birth, you give birth in a private room. You have like your own team you give birth and then you stay in hospital for three to five days afterwards being taken care, taken care of. And you're not allowed yeah. to, you're not allowed to leave bed apart from to do your, your exercise and to look after baby. Whereas we don't, we don't have that, do we, for any kind of labor. And especially yeah. with it being like COVID, you must've been yeah. like rushed in, rushed out. Yeah, I was straight still, out. With Phoenix, I was in for two nights and three days. Um, with, these I was out within 24 hours <gasps> yeah uh, either with the season and 
they I remember with Phoenix it was like the next day they were like okay so you can get your cannulas out once you've done three wees so you need to do three wees and then we will take your cannulas out so because you have to have a um why can't I think of the word um so you can wee after there's, there's quite a lot of C words. You have to have a catheter <laughs> when you have a C-section and they come and take that out the next morning if, if you've had it late or so many hours after you've had your C-section if you've had it earlier in the morning. Uh, mine were both taken <laughs> out. No, actually, the twins, they were taken out in the evening and it was Felix, it was the next morning. <laughs> yeah. And um, so they'll take the catheter out and then they say they'll take the handlers out of your hands once you've done three wees so you start like give me jugs of water so you can like down the water to get those it's out so hand. it's so funny because i know all of us in our head are like imagining it and we i bet all of us are thinking connie was like challenge accepted and they were like <laughs> layer two enter the building <laughs> like <laughs> chucking water down connie's <laughs> neck <laughs> and they're like you're all right get more water please um, <laughs> So that's that, and then and then they were like, and then with Phoenix, they were like you have to shower and remove the bandage from off the top of the incision. Yeah. And the first time I was like, you what? You <laughs> what? And they're like, just get it wet and slowly roll it off. I was like, huh? <laughs> I have to touch it. <laughs> what? I'm not going near that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then with the twins, they did a completely different bandage. It was this like silicony, sticky stuff, and they said, leave it on um for like a week or something yeah um, and they'll come and remove it and that I feel like that actually cost, caused me a lot more pain I feel like the way it was because um you kind of get end up with a c-section you can kind of end up getting a bit of a shelf where the scar is and then obviously when your belly starts to go down you get another bit of a shelf <laughs> like a belly and I felt like they kind of stuck it where um like between there so as I was moving it was pulling it a lot yeah oh, it was yeah. pulling my incision and it kind of felt like my incision was opening and so um I actually just got in the shower and removed that on like day four <laughs> because um it hurt and when I did I felt so much relief on that area and then when the um health visitor came um she was like because the health visitors actually came from a different hospital um, I was in Coventry and they came from Nuneaton. They Nuneaton and Coventry did them completely differently and yeah. they were like, they did what? And so um or it was the other way around. Like I had my had the baby in Nuneaton, the Coventry health assistants came to me. They were like, did what? Yeah, yeah, that's fine that you removed it. Like, so it's even different yeah. practices. Yeah. Um, so everything, like every experience, every C section is obviously different, but only three years apart I've had completely different practices different you know yeah you need to do this and you need, you need to get up and have a shower and take it off yourself you need to wait five days and have a shower mm. you you can't leave for two days oh no you can leave in 24 hours and I know that was definitely more COVID based they didn't want to risk you know you being in hospital and catching anything yeah it, it is it is different um counties though like the county lines have different um yeah ideas and then you also get like the um, the type of hospital that you go to and the staff that you have because with Theon I gave birth in Manchester and we gave birth at um the Withenshaw which was a brand new hospital and so the majority of the staff were students and they would have like student teams that were headed up by like an experienced midwife whereas in Bolton again classes a completely different city they didn't even have access to each other's uh, notes um the setup was a lot older so you didn't have as many like facilities but the midwives there they were really experienced you know the majority of them had like 20 plus years experience in midwifery Mm. and they had maybe like one one student on every every block so the don't you love don't you love awesome midwives yeah like ones that are just so I mean I'm so grateful. I wrote a thank you card to the midwives for my second birth. Like uh, they were just amazing. Like, and it's the the stuff they have to go through, and yeah, you can imagine yeah. it must be such a roller coaster. Like going from one birth to another, and 
just I I don't know when they when they do a good job it's just amazing sometimes they can go a bit amiss because a lot of people will remember like the bad thing that happened or the bad situation a lot more than actually you know behind that bad situation was an army of like amazing lives or amazing like with Emmett when we finally got down to the actual like birthing bit um we were only in there like well he was born off about half an hour whatever and then we're there a little bit longer but those midwives are so amazing that because we were in for Mother's Day because of um, Emmett being in neonatal, Emmett, uh, Kieran came in with a Mother's Day gift for me and I said, can you go down and give it to those midwives? So he Aww. gave them <laughs> It's so the right thing to do though because yeah. I remember when um, when I gave birth to Theon, there was a woman and she was kicking off. Like she was effing and blinding, but she was like punching the walls and all sorts. And I remember thinking like, that must be scary <laughs> like, to have to yeah. deal, deal with that. And you've got to go back in that, in that room. And the same with, um, with Penelope. Like I asked them, like, was I okay? <laughs> like, I didn't give birth when you did. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, was that me? <laughs> 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 but that's the thing though you, you, that's the other side of it you're not in control are you and sometimes no, exactly like, like it's scary for you but it's yeah it must yeah. be scary and you don't day. always read what people say the right way because like you are like in so much agony like I know like even like now if I wake up with a ha- with a headache and I didn't get a good night's sleep I'm such a bitch you know let alone, <laughs> <laughs> let alone when you're like you, you know you're you're giving birth no they're ushering you through like such an intense experience yeah and the it's yeah and they've got good stories bad stories tragic stories happy stories you know what I mean like I just yeah I can't believe what they do (laughs) it goes back to the coaching as well because um well we we, Emmett was in neonatal for like eight days um I had such good coaching like we had the because we got to stay with him we had like the opportunity to just say to midwives (laughs) Can you teach us how to give him a bath? And yeah. can you teach us how to do this? Like, we don't have a clue. So then when, when we had Amelia, and then she was born at, like, 13 minutes past uh, one, and they said at one forty-five you can go home now if you want, or you can stay in a room for six hours and wait for the tests. And obviously we stayed, because we looked at each other and, like, do we not stay here for eight days, and don't you teach us everything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Gross. I, my second meconium while we were doing skin to skin like right after the birth <laughs> oh, yeah. the midwives were like okay her bowels are open <laughs> oh <laughs> no was that all over you yeah but it was fine because everything's all over you at that point isn't it so you're just yeah, like well, true. <laughs> whatever <laughs> it's mm. one thing <laughs> <laughs> the last one on the list was um crying so that's the last c words i, I, I I think I probably, I don't know. I was good. Who's <laughs> crying? Me or the baby? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No yeah. I think I spent like the first Who does it more? <laughs> just crying. And I was thinking about it. I was like, I think probably still now. <laughs> There's a lot of crying. <laughs> yeah. Well, and actually, talk, like, in relation to the mummies crying, I do, is it like day three or something where you feel a bit emotional and like yeah. maybe york's coming in or something like i remember feeling a bit like like i just wanted to cry all day and i rang mum because obviously she was a midwife and she said yep and I was like, what do you mean yep she's like yep all of them <laughs> <laughs> you're just gonna cry <laughs> like your hormones are suddenly changing because you know it's it's the lots of ha- things settling yeah lots of happy crying too which is yeah weird. like you know what I mean? Like, it's just a lot of, they're crying, I'm crying, it's good, it's bad. Like, yeah, it's just... yeah it, it just everything makes you feel, like, really, like, overly emo- overly emotional. And you just have to roll with it. You yeah. just have I to remember, kind of I remember ride came it out. Home. Yanni came home day five, postpartum with P, and all three of us were crying. <laughs> and he was like, Aww. what's going on? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think any of us knew like Theon was going through terrible too so he was like crying he didn't know why P was crying she didn't know why she'd pooed she'd, she'd fed, been fed like everything and I was just crying because I was just crying that's yeah but it didn't just happen in the first week though does it unless that's just me yeah. but you I find that I cry and I'm literally like the tears are streaming and I can't like give you a reason for why I'm crying they're just coming 
yeah, yeah. and that's feel, just, that's not like... in the first week that's just low <laughs> that's just general <laughs> Since well, you, Ted. <laughs> you feel really you feel really moved by something like really innate so like you can't oh, yeah. but any anything now like my friends used to call me cold-hearted like at university I was forced to watch Pierce I loved you five times in a row because my friends wanted to see me cry and I do I'd go oh that's sad but like I wouldn't cry now anything that involves children whether it's happy or sad I cry yeah, yeah. I get goosebumps and fight. I'm there crying. And Kieran's like, "It's a happy moment while you're crying." I'm like, "It's just so happy." <laughs> <laughs> like, and then there'll be he'll, he'll, something sad will happen, and straight away he'll look at me, and he's like, "It's been happening for about two seconds," and I'm like, "Balling." <laughs> no, I think parenthood really does that to you. Me and my, yeah. I mean Tom too. Like anything kid related, anything with parents and kid relationships, I'm like a TV show or a yeah. book or whatever. We're just yeah. both. Or well, if yeah, anything shows you. me like I don't an know. experience that I'm going through, I'm just I start crying. I'm like, oh, it's okay, it's normal. I, <laughs> I joke with I joke with Dane that he doesn't give me the chance to cry because he's already doing it, and I'm there like, <laughs> 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 I just like I'm like it's starting to feel. I look over, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like you know what? <laughs> Oh. Yeah, Yanni, Yanni's exactly the same. I'll be like, can you go and sort that out now? And I turn around and he's like already in a, in a ball. On the- <laughs> <laughs> oh, just mine then. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Scott does not do that. <laughs> no. Mine just sits there laughing at me. Maybe that's who doesn't have the chance to cry because he just finds it funny. <laughs> is that me? Wait, is that to do with your ugly crying though? Is it? <laughs> I don't do ugly crying. I do. <laughs> you I, like, oh. I have that. Be- I have that beautiful glazed over look. <laughs> you just you just crinkle crinkle your nose. Put some boots. Bye. <laughs> yeah. um, something to do with babies crying is I've noticed um, a difference with boys and girls. That's so Ezra kind of like cries in a like whimpery oh, way and it's kind of like gradual or like almost constant <laughs> constant whimper yeah whimper. Uh... It's like that but um autumn will be completely like she'll chilled. seem really, seem really chilled out yeah. like not bothered by anything we'll lie there fine we're picking him up more because oh it's okay it's okay almost feeling <sighs> bad we're not picking her up but she's there like it's okay i got this and then all of a sudden you don't even know what's happened, but it's yeah. ah! <laughs> zero is by hundred. You're like, whoa, what's happened? What's happened? Like you think something really bad must have just happened for her to suddenly because she's so chilled as well. And then suddenly and you're looking at her. She's a Jenkins. You pick her up. Like, yeah. <laughs> you pick her up and she's like, Yeah. Well done. You got that one right. <laughs> that's funny because so, that you say that Connie because I think I've actually noticed that with our boy and girl too quite a few similarities in like at least in the infant years that it was yeah. like that yeah, yeah. The infant it's, time. The same, it's the same with um with P and Theon like P I always think P's like a lot a lot tougher than than Theon was but the minute that she tells you that she needs something from you, like you literally have like five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly the same. This like this yeah. is all on you. Like if I kick off now <laughs> and I ruin this, this is your fault. Like you've got a five second warning. <laughs> yeah, I get all the the stuff like I was talking first, and why are you not listening to me yeah. from her? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, don't fancy having a girl then. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like that silence is you should have known what yeah. I was trying to tell you when I was yeah. quiet. <laughs> but it's like so we'll say, the, and then I'll be like, mum's go, yeah. Yeah. Well, she's like, yeah, she's like a that lot that more one. independent. <laughs> <laughs> she's a lot more independent, but yeah, when she kicks off, it's just like royally kicks off. Yeah. Yeah, you just have to wait. You have to ride it, ride it out. I feel like Theon's a lot easier. Even when he has like a, a full-on meltdown, I can still reason with him, and I can even even things that you probably shouldn't do. Like I can bribe him so he'll be like, "Bar chocolate if you, if you stop crying." And he's like, "Okay, okay," and he'll start with it. It's like it's like nah, nah. Yeah. You, you can't buy me. You can't buy me. I told you. 
I told you, you need to fix this and you didn't. And there's literally, there's like no, no price that you can put on it to, to calm her down. And she doesn't want to talk about it. She wants you to sit and listen to why she's angry, angry with you. I remember one time um, ringing mum, cause I was just like, and this is like the first time round. I was like, I just don't know how to get him to, to stop. He's just having such a tantrum and I don't know how to stop. Like, I don't know what to do. But I feel like everything I'm doing is, is getting worse. And then mum was like, explain what happened. And basically he want, I gave him this treat, but he, um, it was too big a treat. So I took a bite from the top <laughs> and then he just kicked off royally and it just like kept spiraling, spiraling out. And then mum went, just say sorry. I was like, like saying sorry to him is going to work. And I was like, well, fine, I've got nothing else to do. Like, I'm going to do it. And I was like, Emmy, I'm really sorry that I bit the top of your chocolate bar. I it. And he just went, it's okay, mummy. I gave him a cuddle. I was like, are you kidding? Are you kidding? Sorry actually worked. It's, oh, it's true. Cute. It's true. I, I find with them, um, because like Theon at the minute is going through this stage where he um, he won't listen. Like if you, if you have no interest to in him, then he just won't listen to you at all. So I'll completely blank you, blank you out. But I find like if I tell him stories as to why he should listen to me, he like <laughs> he starts to listen and like understand and he'll like he'll almost comply for like at least five minutes just working through it. Like we did the, um, he's really good at, at tidying up and doing the tidy up song. Theon isn't. Theon's like, we got people to do this. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> boring. <laughs> we, we don't need to sing no song. There's, there's grown ups that come and pick this stuff up. And I did like the little red hen with him. And he like, he like sat and I, I was like, I was like, I'm going to do it. Cause like, I've got to try it. Like, this is what they've told me to do. And, and he, like, the more I did it, the more he was listening. He was doing like all the, all the faces. The more I was like, I was like, I, did it. I was like, I'm going to have to finish the story. I didn't think we were going to get there. And I did it. And he was, he was fine. He went and picked up the toys and helped tidy up. And I was just like, sat there like, really? But I know, <laughs> <laughs> I know probably next time if I try the same thing, it's not going to work. He's cracked the code. Yeah. <laughs> he was probably picking the stuff up, going, "What? You got me to pick the stuff up? How did she do it? Why was that? Why she <laughs> Okay, so shall we um we wrap that up then? Is that the end of episode three? Think it might be. That's a wrap. So next week, uh, episode four will be words beginning with D. <laughs> <laughs> Not the big oh, D yeah. that got us into this situation. <laughs> you keep avoiding the, the C word, the D word. I'm going to say goodbye to you guys. I love you. Thank right, you so much. Love, love, love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. So let's change the world.